Hey, and welcome to another edition to the Get Started series, in which we go over talents, traits, how to heal, and more. In this episode, we're going to be covering Restoration Shaman. All information in this guide has been given to us by Lontar, who's consistently been one of the highest rated shamans throughout Legion, peaking at 3,200 rated. First up, let's start with talents. For Restoration Shaman, talents are quite generic only swapping a few talents depending on matchups. Here you can see what they should look like, but I'm going to be covering them now in more detail. Previously, Restoration Shamans required you to be casting heals consistently to top people, so Undulation become the normal choice. However, now with Azerite traits you are able to increase the healing of your Riptide substantially, and Torrent adds even more to that giving you a huge bonus to the initial heal from Riptide, meaning you're going to have to cast a lot less and can rely more on instant casts. For the level 30 talents, you have the choice between Echo of the Elements, Deluge and Earthshield. As you never use Chain Heal in PvP, Deluge isn't of much use. Earthshield, however, is the correct choice here. It gives you some bonus instant healing onto the target while also buffing your healing onto the target by 10%, meaning you gain a lot of extra healing. In situations where teams are purging frequently and Earthshield is not gaining much value, it's better to take Echo of the Elements for the extra Riptide and Healing Stream charge. Next up, for the level 45 talents, you have the choice between Static Charge, Earth Grab Totem and Spirit Wolf. Static Charge is primarily focused for PvE, so should never be really considered. Earth Grab Totem can be used as a tool to help you or your team kite or connect to enemies. Whereas Spirit Wolf is best taken in situations where you are worried about dying inside of a stun and need the damage reduction. For the level 60 talents you have the choice between Ancestral Vigor, Urban Wall Totem and Ancestral Protection Totem. Urban Wall when compared to the other two is the clear choice here. The damage reduction while inside of the totem is way too strong to give up for some extra health or the gimmick resurrection provided by Ancestral Protection Totem. Urban Wall Totem can be used as a very strong defensive cooldown to counter strong damage from the enemy team. Next up, we have the level 75 talents, where you have the choice between Nature's Guardian, Graceful Spirit and Windrush Totem. Out of the three, the default sh choice should be Nature's Guardian in any situation where you know you will be the target. However, in rare situations where you are certain that the enemy team will never consider swapping to you, Windrush Totem can be used to give your team a little extra mobility. Furthermore, if you think you will never be the target and your team doesn't need the extra mobility, such as in Caster Mirrors, Graceful Spirit can be used to give you a shorter cooldown on your Spirit Walkers. Now for the penultimate talent choice, and here we have the choice between Flash Flood, Downpour and Cloud Burst. Downpour is mainly for stacked up PvE healing, so it doesn't really have a place in PvP. Cloud Burst gives you a little extra healing, but can be killed and replaces Healing Stream Totem, so it should not be considered either. So this leaves us with Flash Flood. This will give you faster casts when you consume Tidal Waves, giving you the ability to top teammates faster when having to spam cast. Last up, we have the level 100 talents, where we have the choice between High Tide, Wellspring and Ascendance. High Tide buffs Chain Heal, which we don't use in PvP, leaving the talent redundant. Wellspring is a moving AoE heal, again, mainly focused around PvE. So we're left with Ascendance, which is by far the best talent for burst healing in PvP, due to its ability to duplicate your heals in a 15 yard range, allowing you to easily top your team when behind. Now you know what talents you should be playing, let's talk about PvP talents and trinket choices you should be taking. 
In Battle for Azeroth, we now have the choice between free PvP talents and which trinket we want to use. However, a lot of these are very situational, so we'll go over them all in detail and give you some situations on where you should use each one. First up, let's cover what trinket you should be using. Our choices are Adaption, Relentless and Gladiator's Medallion. Out of the three, Adaption is the worst. It automatically trinkets you out of a first crowd control you receive that is longer than 5 seconds, but is only on a 1 minute cooldown compared to the usual 2. This is very bad in PvP and can be easily exploited by your opponents, so should really never be considered. Gladiator's Medallion should be your default choice in most scenarios, giving you full control of getting out of a crowd control and allowing you to save your teammates with important defensive cooldowns such as Ascendance and Spirit Link. Last up is Relentless, which flat out reduces all crowd control by 20%, but doesn't give you control over your trinket. This should be considered in situations where the team has an abundance of crowd control, but not really any burst damage, where your team is likely to die if you don't have trinket. Some great examples of this are comps such as Shadow Priest Mage, where they looked at do long crowd control chains, but lack the insane burst damage to 100 to 0 your ally while you are crowd controlled. For Restoration Shaman, there is currently one PvP talent that is considered a must and should be taken in all situations. This is Rippling Waters. This combined with the Azerite traits we'll get into later gives you some insane healing from Riptide and more importantly gives you an extra charge. To combine with our Rippling Waters, we have the choice of another two talents. These however are situational and depend entirely on what comp you're playing and what comp you're facing. So let's cover each viable talent in detail and cover some scenarios where you will be wanting to take them. First up is Electrocute. This is an offensive talent that gives you some extra damage tied to your purge. This can be great when playing versus Resto Druids, as the ability to be able to purge their healing over time and also gaining some damage can make it impossible for the enemy team to recover. For example, if you're playing a melee cleave and want to rush down the enemy Resto Druid. Grounded Totem should be taken versus Spellcasters, as it gives you the ability to either ground damage, crowd control or even interrupts, or in some situations Death Knights and Rets, where having the ability to ground in things such as Death Grip or Hammer of Justice can help you in surviving. Spectral Recovery can be taken versus teams where you need the extra mobility to kite, such as melee cleaves that will train you. Combining this with the talent Spirit Wolf can give you ins some insane speed in Ghost Wolf as well as healing and damage reduction, so synergizes well. Swelling Waves should be taken versus compositions that are likely to target you. This will give you some boosted single target healing on yourself, as this talent will heal you for 50% of the healing surge cast on yourself 3 seconds later. Voodoo Mastery can be taken versus compositions where you are required to land crowd control and the team doesn't have a hex dispel, such as when facing a melee cleave that is not targeting you. This allows you to hex offensively or even defensively to stop some damage more often. Sky Fury Totem can be used versus compositions where you don't need any of the other talents to survive, but instead need an extra boost in damage. This is very useful in Caster Mirrors, giving you the ability to give your team that extra little bit of damage to help score a kill. Calming Waters can now also be considered, as you are not losing the healing or casting speed increase from Vim or Defender, like you had in Legion. This can be taken versus teams with an abundance of interrupts such as Warrior, Death Knight, Resto Shaman, that will train you allowing you to more easily get casts off.
Now you know what talents you should be playing, let's move on to gearing and stats. In Battle for Azeroth, stats once again matter, so making sure you are going for the correct secondary stats and that you are using the correct gear will help give you that edge. For Restoration Shamans, your stat weights look like this. You want to be primarily focusing on Intellect, and then as a secondary stat looking to go for maximum versatility, and then Mastery is the next best, with Haste coming in a close third. Finally, Crit is already weak for Shamans, and with it being reduced by half in PvP scenarios, it's will weakest by far. In regards to enchants, you will be wanting versatile navigation on your weapon and enchanting both rings with Pact of Versatility. There is one Azerite trait which is head and shoulders above the rest for shamans, and that is Surging Tides. It gives you a big absorb onto the target you Riptide if they are below 50%. This can be stacked three times, giving you a substantial absorb every time you use Riptide on a target that's low, meaning you can almost get away with only casting Riptide and the occasional healing surge. You want to be aiming to get this trait on both your head, shoulders and chest. However, there are some very good minor traits which you should also be looking out for. These include Pack Spirit for when you need to be in Ghost Wolf Kitin with the Spectral Recovery and Spirit Wolf talents. Also keep a lookout for the traits Earthlink and Woundbinder. These are also very strong minor traits that give you a good boost in overall healing. But first of all, just aim for the free of the trait Surge in Tides, then work with what you have for minor traits. Last up, let's do a quick recap on how to heal and keep your teammates alive as a Restoration Shaman. For Shaman, your overall healing rotation is actually quite simple. It's the small things such as using your ground in and your other utility correctly, which distinguishes you from the other shamans. When healing, your rotation should look like this. You want to make sure that the target you are healing first of all has your earth shield. This gives you the healing effect and also buffs other healing you do to the target by 10%. You then want to use Riptide to gain Tidal Waves and then use Healing Surge to top the target. Healing Wave can replace Healing Surge if you are not in a rush to top the target and wish to conserve mana. Healing Stream can be used for some extra AoE healing when you are about to be crowd controlled or simply don't want to risk being interrupted. For Resto Shaman you have a few defensive cooldowns that you need to use correctly to survive. These are Ascendance, Urban Wall Totem, Astral Shift and Spirit Link Totem. We've already covered all talents, so let's quickly cover Astral Shift and Spirit Link Totem, as these are baseline. Astral Shift is a strong personal defensive, giving you a 40% damage reduction. This is great for countering offensive cooldowns used by your opponents. Spirit Link is great at countering single target damage, evenly redistributing health between everybody inside, meaning it's great for saving an ally who is about to die and your heals alone won't save them. Okay guys, that just about wraps up this Get Started Restoration Shaman Guide. I hope you now have all the information you need to be able to get started going into Battle for Azeroth. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill and leave any comments you still may have below.